So at the end of the last episode, we started to play around with our projectile mode uh, to test the distances that our projectile will travel when we change this initial angle here. Um, and I was having a little bit of trouble demonstrating that because it's just the projectile traveling among a sea of black. And so what I'd like to start out with today is adding a um, is adding a ruler that we can use to measure its horizontal and vertical distance. So we're going to add in some more objects here. Um, so I want to make this an option. So we're going to define a Boolean use ruler. Um, I guess it needs to be cap there. We go capitalized. There we go. Oh, yeah, I have the example right up here I should have referred to. Um, and so this way we can easily turn these rulers on and off. So basically, if we are using the ruler, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a few um, semi-transparent uh, uh, gray boxes that will go along the horizontal axis and will go along the vertical axis. And this will just give us an idea of how, uh, how far our projectile has traveled. Um, so I want to create a, uh, let's see here, I want to create a box that is, let's fi just figure out the dimensions of one of them first, and then we'll get to work on, on replicating them and making more of them. Um, so let's see, so let's have box, so for box you have to specify the position, and you have to specify the size. Now the tricky part is that the position is always the center of the box. So I have to think ahead about how wide I want the box to be. So if I want these to go, let's say every one unit, um, then I want the position to be centered about x equals 0 0.5, uh, because that way, uh, it'll, uh, that way it'll be halfway between x equals 0 and x equals 1. And so we'll have it be at uh, 0 in the y and 0 in the z, though I suppose I should have it be just a little bit below the uh, z, the, the x-axis, just so that way our, it doesn't interfere with the visual of our projectile too much. So we're moving this over to the right by 0 0.5, and we're moving it down just by a smidge. And then its size, um, I want this to mark out every one unit along the x-axis. So my initial inclination is to say that it should have a width along the x-direction of 1. But the downside to that is that if I if I recreate these every one unit, then they're going to be back to back to each other. And so that means I won't really be able to tell where one ruler ends and the other one begins. So let's make this one a 0 0.95, just so that way they're separated by just a little bit. Um, so if you imagine with me the, the, the black space between the two will be uh, will basically be the ruler marking and then we need to give it a thickness um, and I think probably a 0 0.05 ought to be fine that way the top of it will be up at uh, excuse me the top of it will be at negative 0 0.025 so we'll still be below the the x-axis remember the x-axis y equals 0 is where our projectile motion stops and then let's give it the same thickness in the z direction, just in case we rotate it, it, it won't disappear on us. Um, cool, and so then I just need to give it a color. Let's say color dot, uh, yeah, let's make it gray, see how that looks. And then I want it, just in case it ends up overlapping with the projectile, I want to give it, uh, make it semi-transparent. So the command for that in vPython is opacity. Um, opacity is the opposite of transparency. Um, so when something is 100% opaque, it is 0% transparent. When something is 0% opaque, it is 100% transparent. So 0 0.5 is 50% opaque and 50% transparent. Um, so, so I've got my use ruler turned on. I'm creating my, my ruler box here. And so let's see what that looks like visually. And the first time I run it always takes a few seconds longer. Here we go. Oh, um, we have a problem with... Oh, right, right. Uh, color equals color dot gray. Oh, I wonder if it's... Uh, does it know gray? I would hope it knows gray. Maybe it knows gray with the English spelling. Let's try that. Okay, 
Uh, no. Okay. Well, then fine. We'll go with color dot white. It's just trying to make it a little more chromatically interesting. Okay. Cool. So we do have our um, our our ruler here. Okay. And so they do overlap a little bit, uh, which is okay. Um, the the ball is wider than the ruler, so that's obviously winning out. And of course, I forgot that the um, that the projectile is starting out back over here at negative is that negative five. I think I set it at. Um, yeah, it's starting back at negative five, so that's where I'll need to start. So just make a note here to start ruler rulers at projectile initial position. There we go. Um, so that gives me an idea of what's happening visually. Now I don't want to have to enter these in manually. I'd rather the, uh, the computer do it for me. So we're going to create a loop here. Um, so let's define a, let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's define, let's make the X axis first, make X axis. And what I'll do is I'll create a variable. Let's call it box X. This is going to be the box's X position, um, and let's have that be project, uh, projectile dot pause dot X. Cool. So this is going to be the box's X position. There we go. Or I guess X coordinate is a better is a better term. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll create a loop. So we'll say while box X is less than or equal to box x max. So I need to decide on how far to the right I want this ruler to go. Um, so let's say for now that box x max is equal to, uh, let's see, right now we're starting over on the left side. Let's say we want to move it over that far to the right side. Um, so let's just say negative box x. For now, we might need to change this later. I likely need to change. Let's make that note. Um, cool. I need to indent this thing so that it goes within that loop. Um, so this is this is a different loop than the loop I have down here. This is the loop that runs it over time. This is just a loop to create a specified range of boxes. Um, so let's see here. What I need to do now is I need to change this position, this x position, to box underscore x. I can leave the y and the z the same. I can leave the size the same and then we'll increment box X. Now, I, I probably got some comments on this last time that I'm doing the, the old school version of addition down here where you do the, the old thing equals the, or excuse me, the new thing equals the old thing plus the change. Um, there is a shortcut for that where you can just do plus equals and then put in the amount that changes by. So this line, this line right here is equivalent to box X equals box X. Yeah, underscore x plus one. So these two lines are equivalent. So I could, if I wanted to update these um, for for using this increment uh, statement here, uh, but I figured I'd leave them like this just because this is what actually matches uh, the equation you're likely to see in a textbook. So just for pedagogical purposes, I've left it like this down here. I'll probably change it in another update. Um, so what we're doing here is we are saying that uh, box x equals this. Um, and then we are incrementing box X by one. Uh, although, can I do that on something that is a real and not an integer? I think I'm allowed to do that. Uh, I guess we'll find out in just a second. Um, either way, uh, we're gonna increment box X by one. So in other words, the next box is gonna be one unit to the right from the previous one until we reach a value of box X max. So we should see a series of boxes now starting at where the projectile begins. Um, box X max is not defined. I thought I, oh, not box X underscore max. There we go. Still have to worry about spelling. Okay. Hooray. So we get our, our ruler here. So this is functioning like a ruler in the sense that we've got these even markings. So I can tell from this that this thing moved. Um, okay. So it's actually, okay. So I actually need to make a little bit of an adjustment here because this is, I didn't think about this. The projectile is beginning at the middle of the of the box here. You can uh, we can rotate it to get a better idea. So it's beginning at the middle of the box here. I'd rather it begin at the edge so that way I don't have to make a guess as to where it is. But it's traveling from the middle to just 
east of the middle. So we've gone one, two, three, four, five, and a smidge to the right. Um, let's see. So how can I adjust that? Uh, I suppose what I need to do is I need to adjust this thing to the right by half of its width. Okay, so let's make a command box width. Uh, let's see, box width is... Uh, actually, I need, to, I need to shift it to the right by a half, right? So actually, let's make a dx zero of one. And we can change this one to a dx. And now if I ever want to change how far apart the boxes are, I can just change this dx. Um, so let's see here, so box x is gonna be this plus a half of dx, which means I need to define dx above here. There we go. So what I'm doing with this is I'm saying this is how far apart the boxes are separated. Uh, so box, uh, uh, actually no, that's not, well, yeah, 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 box center to center separation. So this is basically the ruler marking aka ruler marking there we go um, so what I can do here is I, I can adjust this if I want to make smaller markings um, so that's that's handy um, so let's see so box X is gonna be box is gonna be projectile position uh, pl dot X plus half of the uh, plus half of the step size so that's great um, so what I need to do here is I need to change my size to be 0.95 of DX. That way I can adjust this and it will adjust my box size accordingly. All right, let's try that again. We should get a better visual this time. Okay, cool. So it starts over to the left of this thing. So it's starting out at marking zero and it ends at marking. Now I can just count the black marks. I can count one, two, three, four, five and a smidge, the same answer we got last time, five and a smidge, so that's pretty cool. Um, so th this this kind of reinforces to you what a ruler is. A ruler is just a series of regular markings. It doesn't matter how you get those markings, you get a ruler, so that's kind of cool. Um, so what I would also like to do is be able to measure, for example, how high this thing goes. So right now I can measure how far over it goes, but I can't measure how high it goes. So I need to add in a vertical ruler or a y-axis so uh, you never recreate code if you can recycle old code uh, so I'm going to now copy and paste uh, my x-axis code and now we're gonna make a y-axis so let's just to avoid confusion we'll give this a dy um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna always want this to be equal to dx but we'll, we'll be able to change it in independently if we want to um, so now we'll call this box Y. I could just reuse all the names, but uh, it's it's better, you know, mentally to have them as separate names just so we can tell the difference. And plus, I may need to have some other piece of code that uses the DX and DY at the same time. So it's always better to be prepared. Um, now this is going to be a problem here because um, my 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 projectile position dot y here is a is zero. So having this equal to negative zero is is not going to get me very many markings. Um, so let's do this. Let's say that this needs to be the maximum of negative this, right? So that'll be uh, uh, if if we started below, it'll be that far high, or box x max. And I just, I'm picking that for now as a, um, I'm just picking that for now as a value to go on. So that way our ruler will be as tall as it is wide. Um, and so that way, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of got an idea of how high to make it. Um, it's entirely possible that it will still exceed this and I'll need some other means of determining how high it is. And as I'm working on this, I suppose the best thing to do is to automatically generate the ruler down here in the loop. So we'll try that at a later time. Um, let's uh, box y less than or equal to box y max. So let me make a note of that to myself here. Um, may need to generate more 
ruler boxes within the motion loop. That might be a project for another day, I think. Um, okay, so anyway, let's start changing our X's into Y's here. Oh, except that this is the X coordinate, right? So I need this to swap with this thing. Um, so basically now it's gonna be negative 0.05 over to the left, and it's gonna be box underscore Y bar up. I also need to swap my arguments on the size array. So it's gonna be 0.05 wide in the X direction, and 0.95 times dy in the y direction. So basically it'll be like I've taken my my boxes from the x-axis and rotated them by 90 degrees. That's basically what that uh, little switch just did. And then of course we need to increment box y, not box x. All right, so help me out here folks. Shout if you see any leftover x's besides this one. Uh, we got a y, we got a y, we got a y, we got a y, we got a y. We got a Y here, a Y here. That's supposed to be an X, yes? We got a Y here, a Y here. You get a Y, you get a Y, you get a Y. You're all getting Ys. Okay, hooray. All right, so we should have a nice ruler on our Y axis now. And we do. Um, I, I thought this thing would auto scale, but I guess I need to change that setting or something. Okay, cool. So I can tell from this now that I go one, two, three, four, five and a smidge over to the right. And you notice, um, my y-axis in traditional format starts at x equals zero, or it's actually, I guess it's it's aligned where it's, its right edge at, is at x equals zero. So this is telling me that this thing just, this helps me recognize that this thing makes it just past x equals zero. And I can see it's going up to about here. So that's about a one, two, three, four, and almost five. So five minus a smidge. So it goes over to the right by five and a smidge, and it goes up by five minus a, minus a smidge, which is pretty cool. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Uh, we've added in a pretty useful feature. Uh, of course, like I mentioned before, it's pretty, it would be pretty easy to break this thing in the sense of coming up with a scenario where I don't have, uh, where, where my rulers uh, don't provide me with enough of a measurement. So for example, I could um, increase the speed of this thing, uh, you know, to something, you know, let, let's, let's, more let, let's almost double it um, so here I'm, I'm clearly getting past the vertical ruler here and I'm clearly getting past the horizontal ruler here because there's nothing really sacred about the the position that I'm at right I could shift that over to the left or right however I wanted and I would still go the same horizontal distance and I would still go the same vertical distance so what we'll do next time is we'll add in a, uh, we'll add in some, some commands into the motion code down here where we can check whether the projectile has exceeded our current um, uh, ruler bounds and add in some ruler markings as we go so that we have just the right number of ruler markings for the problem at hand. So I look forward to doing that with you next time. Have a great day.